A Sussex man who contracted HIV and hepatitis C after being given contaminated blood says a long-running inquiry into how people were infected could be as explosive as the inquiry into the Hillsborough tragedy. Yes, Mark Ward from Pete Haven was among thousands of people affected by contaminated blood that was imported from America in the 1970s and 80s. He believes that the outcome of the Penrose inquiry, which is underway in Scotland, may have far-reaching implications. Chrissy Reedy reports. Mark Ward was just at seven years old when he was exposed to the virus hepatitis C. Five years later, he contracted HIV after being infected with contaminated blood given to him on the NHS as part of his treatment. For the past 20 years, he's relied on a daily cocktail of drugs to survive. During the late 1970s and 80s, to cope with demand, many blood products were sourced from the USA, with some from the UK. Much of the blood from America came from prisoners who were paid to donate. It was highly infected. Little boys were taken into hospital to have a couple of teeth taken out, like lambs to the slaughter. And they knew, they knew the treatment was dangerous. And even before I was diagnosed with haemophilia, they knew there was contamination in the blood products. And yet no actions to even try to protect us. For Scottish patients infected at the same time, the Penrose inquiry was launched in 2011. A report into its findings is currently being written and should be published early next year. But before that can happen, Lord Penrose will hold a special hearing later this month because of issues surrounding the numbers of people infected. Something Mark Ward is campaigning for here by writing to David Cameron. I think there are questions for the government to answer. There were a number of mistakes made at that time. And one of the other things that we would like to see is a public acknowledgement from the Prime Minister in Parliament uh, to, to apologise to people for, for what has happened. Yet in a statement from the Department of Health today, they said there is no justification for a public inquiry. All relevant facts are in the public domain. I've been born into a life of fear. I've been, in, I've been born into a life of pain. And I've been made to suffer because of my genetic difference. My blood doesn't clot and therefore every single government that's been in power has treated me and fellow haemophiliacs like we're worthless, second class citizens. Oh, well, that was Chrissy Reedy reporting there. She joins us live in the studio now. Um, Chrissy, what exactly has the Department of Health had to say about this today? Well, the Department of Health probably gave us a very brief statement, as hopefully you heard there in the report, saying they didn't feel there was any need for a public inquiry, that all the information, all the evidence is out in the public domain. I've just literally spoken to Mark Ward a few moments ago, and he completely disagrees with this. Uh, he's incredibly angry about their response. He goes as far as saying that Westminster have simply swept this under the carpet. Now, the Penrose inquiry was originally set up uh, a couple of years ago for Scottish patients, and the idea was to investigate how the NHS collected treated and supplied blood during that period. They've heard from doctors and patients in Scotland as well and clearly new evidence has come to light as uh, Lord Penrose is going to hold a special uh, hearing later this month. And what exactly is it that Mark Ward wants to achieve? I think basically, Polly, he wants to know, in his words, why his life wasn't worth protecting. He, uh, he says Westminster completely got it wrong. He finds it bizarre that having written to David Cameron and they've passed it on to the Department of Health, they were the people who administered the uh, contaminated blood when he says they should have been uh, protecting him. So, yes. Okay, thanks, Chrissy.